good morning, Vietnam. We stay at a hotel called Gold Dream. Great hotel. Some of the architecture of it's a little strange, but great hotel, very great staff, accommodating staff. The only downside was a barking dog out downstairs, outside, barks all the time. So anyway, we're in a restaurant called On Cafe. Great little breakfast, but great for everything, actually. They don't have much food, so uh, extensive menu, light menu, but it's really cool, very artsy and green and good coffee, good creme brulee, oh, good creme brulee. Anyway, we're having some breakfast, and uh, now that we turned the camera on, the dog that was back here stopped barking. I was gonna tell you, hey, our friend came with us from the hotel to the restaurant. So, one of the things we're trying to do while we're here in Dalat this time, different than before, was before we came to check out prices and we found out that it's very economical to live in Dalat. The weather's nice in Dalat. People are friendly in Dalat, but it's a smaller town. And so we wanted to see if you came and lived here, would you get bored? Is there enough to do? And we rented a motorbike this time in Dalat that we didn't do last time. Last time we rented one in Da Nang. Yeah, Da Nang, I think. But we didn't have a motorbike here. So actually we've been on a motorbike for a day or so. And the city's a lot bigger than what we thought. We were confined to the tourist area last time. And that's why I was approached by the hawkers all the time and everything. But with the motorbike, we're able to get around the city. So we're coming up with a, a favorite First, chicken soup place. We got a nice breakfast place now that we like to eat at. A couple places to eat dinner and our favorite bakery. So we're sort of relaxing into the lot. That, you know, what would it be like to live here full time? You'd have your favorite places. You would have things to do. So you can exercise. There's a lake in town. You could exercise by walking around the lake. If you're into golf, there's a golf course here. You could go golfing. It'd be nice to know if there were some tennis courts around. I haven't played tennis in years. I love tennis, but in where we live in Thailand, there are no tennis courts. But it'd be great to, to do tennis. For me, I love the outdoors. This is one of the reasons of, of a few that I moved from Chiang Mai to Cha'am. I wanted to be around the outdoors. And in Chiang Mai, it's basically a city. You can go up in the mountains 20, 30 minutes and get away. But Living at the beach, you just walk out to the beach and you can walk up and down the beach. You feel like you're in nature. You get the cool, the clean air, the sound of the water, very, you know, and you feel like you're in nature. Chiang Mai I couldn't escape the city. Well, in Dalat, there are, is some green area, there is the lake, it is hilly, so it's got a different feel to it, a different ambiance to the city. But today we're actually going to head out to, there's like six waterfalls within two hours of here. Uh, so we're going to actually go on the motorbike, I think 40 minutes was it? I think 45 minutes or so to a waterfall today. Because I want to experience, if I lived here, I would want to get out into nature. I really miss nature. I miss camping too, which I used to do in the United States a lot. So I want to get out to the outdoors because if I was living here full time, I would want to utilize that and go out as much as possible into nature, which there's a lot of around here. So that's what we're going to do today. We're going to have a little bit of uh, a little bit of uh, breakfast and some coffee. They actually at On Cafe, they I think they actually roast and grind their own coffee because I saw the roaster over there and I see a grinder, and so I think they actually roast their own coffee, which is really cool. So for a dollar, I forget what it was, a dollar. 39 or something like that. Let me see. We'll get we got eggs coming. Two eggs over easy. French fries, a small salad comes with it, and a French baguette for the equivalent of 35,000, which is gonna be a dollar fifty is our breakfast. And if you're if we're still doing the video when it comes, I'll show it to you. But actually, uh, Nat also got, look at this, the juice comes, fresh juices that they, they make themselves. This is actually fresh grape juice, which we've never had before, but she ordered it. So, And see, I'm the official taste tester for my queen, Queen Nat. So I always have to make sure that 
everything's safe to eat before she eats it or drinks it, so I, I'm obligated to do this. That is fresh grape juice. It's a little bit tart. <laughs> and it seems as though they, they, when they juice this, they're juicing the seeds in with it. Which is giving it a, a funny, like a dryness to my tongue. But what's interesting about this is, coming from the States and growing up, I, I never wanted grapes with seeds. I always wanted seedless grapes. They were convenient to eat, they were easy. Once I got to Thailand, they do have seedless grapes, but I started eating seeds with grapes in them and every once in a while chewing up the seeds because grape seed extract, what's in the grape seeds is really healthy. So actually this juice with the seeds ground up would be a very healthy juice. So there you go. That's what we're doing today. That's our outcome of the lot to see uh, if it's a good place for, for me and that. If we wanted to live full time, something happened in Thailand, we had to go. We have a place that's plan B. Chomp, Dalat, na. Chomp, huh? So she likes Dalat. Why do you like Dalat? I should turn the camera around and give it, put it on you. <laughs> Beautiful. So I am. Uh, and I eat, what else? Cool, cool yeah. Food, food. The food's good. People are friendly. Yeah, I like it here. We're, we're feeling very comfortable here. Da Nang was nice for a beach community, but it was a town. The traffic was kamikaze to drive a motorbike there, but we like the beach. And, but we have the beach in, in Thailand, so it's not a big difference. Where if we came from the beach in Thailand around Way In or around there and actually came to here, it would be a big difference. It would be a great uh, change for us to come here, even if it was two months during the burning season in Thailand. So anyway, I'm not gonna bore you with any more of this. We're gonna be off to uh, check out the waterfall after our meal. Plus we got some uh, cool green tea, which is obligatory, I think, for them to serve. Great, good breakfast, and we're out of here, and we're gonna be on the road out to nature. See I don't know we can do 50. I wanted 40. We'll see. Okay, 
Okay, so we made it to the waterfall. <laughs> Actually, this is just a little river I'm going underneath the bridge, and we've had a lot of rain, so it's got quite a bit of uh, water flow going here. Sounds really nice. If this has got this much water, I'm imagining the waterfalls we're going to, which I think are called Elephant Waterfall, is going to be pretty spectacular this time of year. And there's people uh, trying to fish in here as well, which is pretty cool. Okay, on the road to the Elephant Waterfall. I think this is the miniature Elephant Waterfall. Waterfall. It was an interesting ride going through the rural areas of Vietnam, especially in the north. It was beautiful. Some of it was mountainous, but as we came out of the mountains of Bella, it got warmer. In fact, I took my jacket off. It's not so, so cool anymore. But uh, it was interesting driving through the rural areas because Nat and I have never gone through the rural area of Vietnam. We're always were on the train when we went through, so we weren't able to really see what was going on in the cities, or the little towns, I should say, and the condition of the roads and everything. The roads weren't really good, but they weren't really bad. The interesting thing was we needed some batteries, so we stopped in this little tiny town, and uh, a young guy could speak English. He said, the first was an older guy, I'd say in his 50s or something, and he just shook his head. He didn't have alkaline batteries. He just shook his head and pushed his hand like go down the road and then so I stopped at another place young guy I said go over here in English it was great so um, we got the batteries but the, the rural areas going through the rural areas was really interesting to me to see what um, the countryside or the rural areas looked like and how the people were which is really great so anyway we're at Elephant Waterfall now which is about an hour out of the lot on a motorbike and it costs 20000 to get in here now, I don't usually do tourist things or show you tourist things, but I figure if I ended up in Dalat, I wanted to, I was hoping this was going to be like a, a park kind of thing where you could walk trails and stuff and then go to a waterfall. But it doesn't seem like that's the case. Maybe we can hike down there, I'm not sure. No map or anything. But 20,000 Vietnamese dong per person, which is about 33 baht, so about a dollar to get in here per person. There are more people. I guess you can hike down to the bottom, so we'll probably go down there. Uh, but let's check this out over here. As you can hear, it gets pretty loud. Warning, danger, do not climb over the fence. No worries, I'm not climbing. The falls have plenty of water, that's for sure. Wow. Wow, there's some force going out back. Going down, wow, very nice. And with the water falling like that, it creates a lot of negative ions. So that's why people feel so good around waterfalls or during a storm, thunderstorm or something. Now you can see, I don't know if Nat can get that on the camera, but way down there, you can see how much debris has come down the river, a lot of trash and ended up down there in the rocks. There's a whole pile of it. It sort of like filtered out the trash. <laughs> Too bad they don't go down there and try and get all that out. It'd be much prettier. But this is a nice waterfall here.
So we hiked up and down the waterfall and I don't know if you remember a couple videos ago, I'm not sure if we mentioned or not, we lost the lens cap for our video camera in a taxi. So I was able to come up with one uh, to use and it actually had a tether, which is really good so we wouldn't lose it again. But today at the waterfall, guess what happened? Nat got a broken heart. <laughs> She's got a broken heart now. So we're gonna have to mend her broken heart. But anyway, so yeah, it was fairly, it wasn't too strenuous, but it was wet. Um, it is going straight up and down in a lot of places. It's very slippery and it's very wet. It's very muddy. Luckily I had tennis shoes on and zip off leg pants. So when I was finished, I could actually wash off my tennis shoes, zip off the bottom end of the pants there the pant legs and rinse them off, try and get them clean because it was muddy, clay mud. And so anyway, it's a pretty cool, a nice place to, to come hang out. And we're getting some soup, which is uh, $1.75, I think, for a bowl of soup, noodle soup with chicken on an old standby. And what was really cool is they actually have a menu that's got uh, Vietnamese and English translation. So this is a great strategy if you think about it. Uh, try and do this. What I did was pull these little pages out and photograph each one. So if we go to another restaurant, I can actually point now, we can read in English, know what it is we want, point to it in, in Vietnamese and be able to order it because we order probably a limited of, we probably have about six dishes, maybe seven, something like that, dishes that we're familiar with that we can order, that we know what we're getting. The rest of it I had no idea. I'd see signs everywhere. I had no idea what it was. But now with the English translation, I can look and say, oh, I know what that is. So you might not be able to say it or pronounce it, but you'd be able to know what it is in English, point to it in, in Vietnamese, and you're good to go. I'd probably cover up the, the prices, though. So. Anyway, there you go. Elephant Falls. I didn't see any elephant falling, though. Did you see any Ken Chong told me? No, she didn't see an elephant falling. Either. Anyway, maybe next time. Actually, I'm happy the elephant didn't fall. Got to save them, save the elephants. So we're going to get back on the road. We're going to stop and get some, I think it's called Capilot. Capilot coffee, which they call weasel coffee here. So I think I saw some places. I know, we might stop at the cricket farm we saw on the way here and the, the weasel coffee shop. Wow. OK, I think this is the big size here. The big size, I think, was I think it was a dollar fifty for the small, and the big one was yeah, dollar fifty was for the small one, and the big one, which I think is the big one, I'm not sure, but uh, it'd be a dollar seventy-five for this one if this is a big size. But anyway, we're gonna munch out, break up some herbs in there. I think we showed you before. You can just take these and break them up, put a whole bunch of these in, some basil. I don't know what this is called. I like it though some basil, some lemon, lime, squeeze that in there, some lettuce, and some soy sauce. I actually put this in. They actually use this uh, hosen sauce for the spring rolls, but I like it in the soup as well. And some obligatory chili to make it spicy. So there you go. We're gonna eat, get back on the bike, and uh, maybe drink some weasel coffee. I'm afraid it's gonna taste shitty though. All right. So we're headed back to Dalat, but there's one thing I gotta try, which I've never tried before. Here they call weasel coffee. Weasel coffee. But I'm not gonna drink weasel coffee. I'm gonna drink Capilot coffee. Now I've never had this before. I'm not sure how expensive it's gonna be here. You know, most of the reason I've never had it before is because it was expensive everywhere, but we'll see how much it costs. I need some coffee. This will be good for me. Ah. Uh, Let's see what we got here. And they got food with an English menu. Coffee, here we go. Let's see what we got here. Hello. Hello. May I have these? Sure. Huh? Yeah. Uh, weasel coffee. I'll uh, try one weasel coffee, weasel coffee with weasel coffee with milk. Weasel coffee with milk? Yeah. Okay. Uh, 
one, one weasel coffee one with milk. Yes. Okay. Making coffee in a new way with high quality. I don't know what that means. Hmm. Want something to drink? Oh, that's Vietnamese language. <laughs> that's okay. So, I've never had coffee this way before. The water is going to come up, huh? Yes. Wow. And where's the coffee go? This is going to be interesting. See the water? See the water is going out? It's going, the water is getting sucked up into the, into this up here. This is the making coffee new way, high quality. Huh? Yeah. Nat would even like to wake up to that in the morning. Hum. Ah. Well, this is interesting. But I'm not sure how we get the coffee out of the grinds. This will be interesting to see. Oh, there we go. So the heating process is finished. Now, oh, the coffee's going back down into here. Look. Look, the coffee, now that she took the heat off, the coffee's going to come back down. But the grinds will stay in the top. Oh, this is cool. Wow. And if you wonder why it's shaking, because she's trying to get a coconut off of the vine over there. <laughs> wow. Look, look, there it goes. Oh, this is cool. Well, back home, maybe this is something that's popular or people know about, but I've never seen this before. No wonder my weasel coffee 70000 three times the normal price. <laughs> wow. Very good. A little stand for this and everything. Yeah. And then pour it in. Weasel coffee, huh? Weasel coffee. Wow. All right, thank you. Okay, my first taste of weasel coffee. Vietnam style. What do you call this? We what it? The one downstairs, the weasel coffee. Yeah? Yes. You have the weasel down there? Hey, do you see the weasel in that? You can see the weasels. Looks like a dog. The weasel? <laughs> Looks like a dog. <laughs> oh, it is a dog. You don't see him? She says we can go down and see him. So let me drink my weasel coffee and then I'll go thank the weasel <laughs> for doing such a good job. Now it's got a coconut coming, but she can't get it off the thing to open it. Okay, here goes my weasel taste test. My first cup of luck. Well, that tastes a lot different. Wow. I'm not sure what to say about this. Yeah, this is expensive coffee, huh? It's got an interesting taste, that's all I can tell you. I don't want to say it's like a burnt taste, but it's it's definitely not a shitty taste. <laughs> uh, okay, well, it's copy look time. Here's to the weasel.
mention something. Nat and I stumbled upon something today that we didn't know about. We've been to Dilat a few times, and there's a big C uh, department store. And it has food and everything. It's just like our department stores back home. It's got a little of everything. And in that building, or it's actually underground, there's a lot of little shops and stuff. Well, today we were perusing around. We actually parked somewhere we'd never parked before and walked in, and there was a whole another area of the underground that we never even knew existed. And it has movie theaters, but it also has this food court, which we never knew was even here. So we said, okay, we're gonna come back for dinner. So we're in here, and really great. They have all these little food stalls, and that can show you, which have pictures of what you're gonna eat. Now, once you're here for a little while, you can understand the word for beef and pork and shrimp and chicken and stuff like that. So you'll know which one has what in it. Plus there's pictures, plus there's some of these uh, models, they make models of the food, so you see what it's gonna be as well. And on top of that, the waiters and waitresses speak English. Is that cool or what? So the food, uh, looking around, the prices look like they're around 50, 60, equivalent of 50 or 60 baht, which would be about how much I'm gonna put on the screen. <laughs> And so it's not that expensive to eat in this food court, which is really great. Great, It's cool, it's um, not real quiet, but it's great. I mean, it's clean and great food. Yeah, go ahead and put that down. What is the name of this place? Mongongdala. Oh my God. Mongongdala. 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 Yes. Yeah. I'm Very cool. So you can look at, take an example of what Nat got. Nat got a noodle soup, which smells delicious. And it's got shrimp, looks like a little bit of beef and a little bit of pork. She probably won't eat the beef, I'm not sure. But we've seen this before on menus and never ordered it. But we just saw them make it and said, what was that? So she ordered that. And I think that was, I don't know, 77... 77,000, something like that. Not that much. This is a great option. So if you're here in the lot, you're looking for something different, they have desserts, they have soups, they have hot pots, or you can cook your own food. They have spring rolls. And so, great place. Check it out when you're in the lot. <laughs> anyway, we're gonna eat. What did I get? Well, I get some kind of rice and gravy and shrimp, fried shrimp or something. Looks really good. But check it out. Here. Hey, thank you. Hey, there's my spring rolls. We actually got spring rolls. And I gotta tell you, Nat and I ordered some spring rolls before, and these are the these are the smallest spring rolls I've ever seen in my life. Oh, that's hot. All right, check it out next time you're in the lot. It smells good. I'm not sure how it tastes, but it smells good. I might come on afterwards and tell you what the total bill was. Soup, spring rolls, bottle of water, and my dish with the rice and the shrimp. So we finished up our meal. It was pretty tasty. Mine was sort of like a combination. I think it was sort of halfway between masaman, which is a Thai dish that is, I think, from the southern part of Thailand, which has curry in it and potatoes and usually has peanuts and stuff. And a combination between that and an Indian dish because it had turmeric in it. But it was pretty tasty anyway. Um, but I just wanted to mention, I thought it was going to be cheaper than it actually was. The bill came, this was for the soup, my dish with the two shrimp and the rice and the potatoes and gravy, and uh, fried spring rolls and a bottle of water came to 192,000 Vietnamese dong, which comes to 284 baht or $8.73. So I can say, as a whole, since we've been hanging out in the lot, going out to eat. I don't know if it's the, the restaurants that we're frequenting because we're looking for something that we can understand the menu because we don't read the language. 
which if you're in Thailand or anywhere else, you're going to probably go to some place that either has pictures on the menu or English written on the menu. And so those, when you're over here, are going to be little higher-end restaurants and more expensive. So this is more than we'd actually pay uh, for sure in Thailand. This would be uh, about the comparable price of eating in one of the malls in Bangkok or something. But anyway, I just wanted to pass it on. And I also wanted to mention, when you sit down at tables here, they're going to give you tea. Hot tea, usually. They didn't bring any hot tea tonight in this place, but usually restaurants will bring you hot tea. It's free. Don't worry about it. You're going to have to get hit with a bill or something and pay for it. But these little hand wipes that they put on the tables, these usually they'll charge you for on the bill. So if you don't want to use them or clean your face, you can use them to clean your face, your hands, whatever. If you don't want to use them, Keep them on the plate, move them aside, and make sure when you get your bill that you didn't get charged for them. So, actually, the little guy who waited on us, he brought these and said, they're free. So, he's probably aware that people aren't happy when it comes on their bill. Anyway, that's a uh, mong dong in Dalai. Good meal. Check it out. I think you got a great variety, and with the pictures, it's easy to order something. See ya. Football. Do you saw how these people were so excited about this game or this match of football, what we call soccer in America, and that game Vietnam won, and the place went crazy. Oh, you know, half the night they were partying the streets. Everybody's in the streets, carrying Vietnamese flags, honking horns, just party city. And it was like, well, I don't get it. What's the deal? And it turns out that this is the Asian uh, under 23 Asian Cup. And traditionally, Vietnam hasn't done well at all in soccer or football. And so when they won last time, the place went crazy. This was like four or five days ago or something like that. Then last night when they won, they went ballistic because now what? They're in the finals. They're in the championship round, which is incredible for the for the country. And I got to tell you, the pride they have in this team and uh, the pride of the country, it was amazing to see. Last time I saw something like that, that kind of exuberance, that kind of a, a appreciation for their athletes and stuff, was when I saw the world, Brazil win the World Cup. I was in Orlando, which has a high population of Brazilians there. And when Brazil won the World Cup, they went out and just stopped traffic with their party and even around uh, International Drive. I mean, it just came to a deadlock um, because they were so excited about their team winning. That's what it was last night. So I think Uzbekistan, they play in the finals in a few days or something like that. Um, and so it's going to be interesting to see if Vietnam wins. It'll be really great for the country, and the people will go nuts. So very cool. Just wanted to bring that up because I showed you they love football. Well, they love it a lot. An addendum to my video about going to eat at the shopping mall underneath. Good food. A little bit expensive, but not too bad. But good food. Yeah, I, I highly recommend it. Another thing about that, which is cool, which is a, an addendum to that story, is that when I was getting ready to leave, actually, let me give you a little backstory. When we were coming in, there was a whole table of, of these people. And it was a pretty big table. I guess there was probably about 15, 18 people or something. And I saw these little trophies that have to do with the Asian Cup. And I don't know why they're on the table or anything, but anyway, so we go eat, and when we're finished, I wanted to say I could see that they were toasting the whole time we were eating. They were toasting with their beers, you know. And um, I had to think, well, it has to do with the soccer that they, the match that they just won, which put them into the finals of this Asian Cup under 23 years old. So anyway, I walk up and, and I ask one of the wait staff, how do you say congratulations? And so I walked up to the table and I said, I want to say congratulations. And this guy stands up right next to me and shakes my hand and says, oh, thank you, thank you. Um, and then everybody stands up and, and, oh, thank you, thank you. Well, it turns out the guy that stood up 
he says, uh, hey, can you sit down? I said, no, no, we were just leaving. So he hands me a beer. He says, that's free. Here, here's a beer. And so I drank the beer, and he started talking to me. And it turns out this guy is named Wee. I think his name is Wee. I, if I mispronounce his name, I'm sorry. But anyway, he said, well, I own this. I was like, real interesting. You know, hey, well, good, you know. And he says, come back tomorrow. We're having this big party. You're invited. This whole thing is for the staff, 700 people. So I said, he said something else about the mall. And then he says, yeah, I own that. And so I'm starting to think, well, he owns the restaurant. He owns something else in this mall. And he says, you play golf? And it turns out, he, he says, he says, where are you from? I said, originally from the United States. He says, oh, I, I was from the United States, too. I've been in Vietnam now 35 years. He says, you play golf? I said, what I do can't consider playing golf. I'd love to learn, though. And he says, oh, you got to play golf. I own the golf course. <laughs> I don't know who this guy was, but obviously with those, those trophies and everything, it might have to do with some kind of sponsorship for the football team. I don't know. But anyway, then he says, oh, the guy sitting next to me, this guy, he introduced me to him. He was like the head of the police for a lot. So it's a small world, small community in there, <laughs> really friendly people. I want to look up Mr. Wu when I get back. He was a really friendly guy. And uh, if he ever sees this video, I want to say thank you, and uh, it was nice to meet you. But anyway, very cool meeting this guy. So you never know what you're going to find when you're communicating with the people around you. Hey JC here. If you like that video, make sure to give us a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel here. Also, we have another video up here you're going to be really interested in watching as well. And if you're looking for all the details of how to retire in Thailand in one place, plus a group of people to support you, check this out over here. Give it a click.